Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video because I wanted to talk about uh, the units coming up pretty soon. So if you don't know, uh, with Olympus's chapter release a week later, which we released on the 24th, so I think technically the 23rd, something like that. So either on the 30th or the 31st, we should be getting Banner 2, which will have Romulus Quirinus. Story spoilers, I guess. <laughs> Sorry about that if you got spoiled for it. Um, yeah, that's weird. But anyway, um, so I'm going to be over what they do. And that's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. If you do, feel free to leave a like, comment, tell me if you're summoning for them or not, or if you're still saving for your anniversary, because that's the big time. This is definitely a unit worth saving for, in my opinion. So he's definitely one of the big ones of this year. Honestly, one of the big ones. Uh, it's just so easy for Castoria to completely overshadow every single unit kind of in the game, but this guy is definitely a big one. Um, and subscribe to me if you want some more uh, videos featuring me. So let's get into it. This is Romulus Quernos. He has two Buster cards, two Arts cards, one Quick. His active skills are uh, Throne of Quernos, EX, increases party's attack for three turns, increases party critical damage for three turns, further increases the crit damage of Roman allies for three turns, and 500% chance to inflict a Roman trait debuff for five turns to all enemies. And the attack up is 20%, crit damage up is 20%, and crit damage specifically against and further increase for Roman allies is a 30%, so. If you're Roman, you get 50% for three turns, and all the enemies are Roman for five turns. Uh, second skill, Apothesis B, grants self invincibility for two attacks, three turns, charges on MP gauge, gain 10 crit stars, 30% MP, six turn cooldown. Very nice. This invincibility is the best kind, it's the one that's similar to Ku where it's based off of hits as opposed to turns. I like those better, more personally. And gaining crit 10 crit stars is always nice. Third skill, nine lives Roma slaying the 100 heads Roman style A. Increases his own buster performance for three turns. Increases his own crit star absorption for one turn. Grants self on attack activated debuff for three turns. Inflict the Roman trait debuff for five turns to enemies when critical attacking. Buster up is 30% and the absorption is 500%, so another skill that just lets you apply Roman to everything. Passive skill, magic resistance A, uh, independent action B+, increases on crit damage. Divinity of the Chief God, increases on damage by 235 and increases on Buster performance by 9%. His append skills are not important for us anyway. <laughs> we don't get those for another year or so. Noble Phantasm, uh, Anti-Star hits 5 times, deals damage to all enemies, deals 100, plus 20% extra damage to Roman enemy, enemies, Roman trait stack, uh, max 10 stacks, the Roman trait stack count, max 10 stacks, inflict the Roman uh, trait debuff for 5 turns to them, grant party the Roman trait buff for 5 turns, 300% damage, increases party attack for 3 turns, 10% at level 100, and yeah, this is Quernos. So, why is Quernos so good? Well, Quernos is just able to do an insane amount of damage, and some of that is his own. He's a, he's a very interesting unit because he basically, a lot of units kind of release and they have like a gimmick, like let's say they are anti-death, or they're anti-men, or they're anti-something, and very rarely does it like actually benefit much except for in weirdly niche situations. But Quernos is different because Quernos can just give it to absolutely everyone. He can make absolutely everyone Roman from attacking them, from using a skill, from using the NP. At every given point, you can become Roman. And if you're Roman on your side, it's a benefit. If it's Roman on the enemy side, it's a debuff. Um, it's a very fun, interesting way of fighting. He is Buster, and on the Buster side, uh, that usually translates to big damage, and he's for sure going to get the big damage done. I'm not sure if you could, you could probably, let me see, this is six turn cooldown. Mm, 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 you could probably loop with him. Eh, 30%, usually you want 50% for this, but whatever. Still, six turns is pretty nice. Um, the other good thing about him is that he also runs great with a 3-star 
Vodica, because Vodica has a lot of abilities that up until this point, so she was also anti-Roman, and she increases the party's damage against Roman enemies for three turns, increases party crit damage for three turns, and she gives 60% Roman damage and 50% crit damage to the party. Uh, let me see, I think she has more. That might be the one skill. But this one skill combined with him... Oh uh, yeah, yeah, it's mainly that skill. This skill <laughs> combined with what he does just makes it so that this NP deals a lot of damage. Because you're dealing a lot of extra damage and this can stack up to 10 times. There's plenty of ways for you to get Roman. It's really funny that the, the main guy from Rome <laughs> is anti-Roman. He's just so good at giving you Roman and buffing Romans, but then he's also at best when he's fighting other Roman servants. So he's someone who actually has a very interesting and different kind of way of fighting that is beneficial. I want to say the other kind of unit that's very similar to him is not in exactly what they do in the terms of like creating a niche that works for them through some weird... I think it is under... Foreigner? Yeah, I think it's... Van Gogh, yeah, Van Gogh has a very interesting where they're all about kind of in giving curse to themselves and buffing themselves and doing all this other crazy stuff with curse, something that in theory should not work out. Like in theory, his ability should just be niche and not that great, but it turns out that it's actually extremely busted and under the right circumstances can be extremely good and fun to use. And yeah, that's his unit. So if you're someone who's wondering, hey, should I summon for this unit? I definitely think he's worth it. Um, he, they, it, he's a, a god, so it doesn't really have a pronoun, so I'm just defaulting to he. Um, definitely fits best with Buster. You know, so if you have someone like Merlin, or not even Merlin, honestly, you don't even need, probably don't even need Merlin. Yeah, Merlin definitely helps with the overkill, but all you really need is like a Waver and a Bodica, and you can just have some silly fun completely destroying uh, enemies by making them Roman, give, making yourself Roman, and constantly just hitting them up. Uh, the one negative, I don't think I have a negative for him. Yeah, I don't really think, he's just very good at what he does. And I'm usually not the biggest fan of busters with 30% NP charge unless they're berserkers, but he just makes it work, and he can work extremely well. Uh, if you're someone who's probably going like, hey, um... Is he worth it over someone like Castoria? I would probably say no, uh, but everyone would say that. But again, it also kind of depends on your playstyle. If you're someone who absolutely hates um, using arts unit and has no plans of ever using an art unit, then Castoria is basically useless to you, except for for friends party system. Even though I think even under that circumstance, she's still good enough to be used and quick. And in theory, I think she's also used in Buster. So, damn, there's really just no hiding. I think the <laughs> the main problem with him is that when he released, he was such a crazy, easy must-summon just because of how crazy powerful he was. And then Castoria happened, and it kind of changed the narrative over what you should be saving and kind of spending for. So if you aren't going for him, I wish you the best of luck. I have to skip going for him because I already uh, used the extra things I was going to plan to use on him on someone else. So I'm just not going to be able to get for him, which is a shame because I kind of would like him, even though I'm not someone who really plays Buster all that much until <laughs> the better Buster supports come out. That's my current plan anyway. Um, but yeah, that's all I have to say about him. So if you have any uh, thoughts or opinions about him, feel free to leave them down below. I'm always interested to see what other people hear to say because under my eyes, I've always, I've never seen anything negative said about him. Uh, but funny enough, he's not on the same like talk. I wonder why. Maybe it's because he's not Buster. Not, not that he's not Buster. It's probably because he's not a Berserker. He's a Lancer. But I definitely think when I look at the, the new Lancers, he's definitely one of the better ones. Let me see. Like, for an AoE Lancer? Let's see if there's any new one that really comes to my mind. Melanie is, but she's a... She's a, I think, a quick slash arts. I think that's the case. No, she's double arts. Okay, no, she's a single target too. AoE. That's what it was. So yeah, in terms of Buster, I don't think there's very many that can kind of compete on him. It's Air Chicago. <laughs> that's about it. It's a good investment, I think, for AoE, Buster, Karna. 
No, I think he's I think he's better than Karna for sure. Uh, just the way he's built, he's better than Karna. But yeah, that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. You guys have a good day. See you guys next time. Bye.